So today, so I'm talking about uh, attitude, approach, knowledge. I don't really know what it is, but um, there's a celebrant who is further south. He's down at Brighton Way called Stuart O'Sullivan. Fab guy. Um, sent a couple of weddings to his way that I couldn't ma I couldn't make. I've only got one pair of hands, so I can only one face. Um, and it's fab, and he's like, oh my god, that venue's gorgeous. It's like, I know. Uh, and so we've got, there's a wedding um, planner that's like, oh, you know, either the couple will suit Stuart or they'll suit Helen. Um, so we work quite well as a team. Anyway, he also does funerals. I also do funerals. Sometimes celebrants only pick one or the other. But Stuart and I both do both. Anyway. Um, he posted today that someone had inquired and said, are you available for a fake wedding? And the ripples. We were like, oh, really? That's what people used to say a decade ago. Like, come on. Ugh. So in one way, it was a little bit depressing that people still see it like that. In another way, it's kind of sort of motivated us on to go, hi, guys. Um, to be like, it's just so not like you're not fake, faking your entrance. You're not a hologram. That's not a pretend bridal gown. Um, those flower girls are really there. Like the ceremony isn't fake. You're invited to a wedding ceremony. You're not invite. You're not invited to the marriage. You don't have marriage invites, or go down to Smiths and buy a marriage magazine. You're not invited to the marriage. The marriage is between those two people. The marriage is the legally binding contract. The whole thing of the event is a wedding. So there's nothing fake about it. You're not... I, uh, I just... I just... Um, I don't get it. I don't know why people still think... Um, I've existed. Victor Celebrant Services. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know if you saw Stuart's um thing. Um yeah, so it's it's just on picking it and going back to, going back to basics, like literally going back to language. A lot of you that have been following me for a while um know I've got quite a thing about language. Um and I I get really annoyed that there was sort of a, a 15 year gap in the education where people weren't taught Latin. And so they don't know where the language comes from and they don't know if it's connected to Greek or Latin. And uh, anyway, um, so language is really important. So think about the words you're using. You have wedding invites, you have a wedding dress, you have wedding magazines, you have open days for a wedding venue. You are, I'm a wedding celebrant. You're, you're coming to a wedding. It's not a marriage venue and a marriage. Can you imagine if you had to wear your wedding dress every day of your marriage? The wedding is the event and that's what you're invited to and that's what I will design for you and that's what you can really get your, your imagination in and your heart in because it is the springboard to your marriage. <sighs> so... Had we had a celebrant-led wedding, because 13 years ago, had I known it was a thing, um, I think maybe he would have made me promise to keep tidy. So I was just going to have fun. Anyway, so... Some people have um, found me as their kind of ideal client, ideal supplier, because... I don't, A, I haven't got the energy to be fake. B, I haven't got the memory to be fake because to be fake, you've got to remember what you lied about and that's just not going to happen. Um, but mainly it's because I've just grown up in the ceremony. I mean, I grew up um, in the Church of England. My parents are very much attendees of the church. My kids go to a Catholic school. Um, just church life is part of my culture. So weddings that have that churchy feel, I do I do think, not church feel, churchy structure, as in you walk in, you have your person at the front, Vivian Celebrant, 
um, and they do they do the hello, they do why you hit that kind of structure of the marriage ceremony, the marriage ceremony because you get legally married by a vicar. Um, I do quite like that structure. However, the massive difference is at the address or the sermon in a church wedding. It's how you've been joined in the eyes of God and how um, Jesus was himself the wedding at Cain in Galilee, yada, yada, yada. It's not necessarily about you. It's about being joined together in the eyes of God and let no man but asunder. But with a celebrant-led wedding, I, I do think that structure of the church wedding works. Um, and I think it's got a nice flow. It gets the energy right. You're quite sombre and serious for a bit and then you're quite reflective and then you have a story and then you think about the story and then you have a song and you're rejoicing. So I do like the structure of a church ceremony. Um, as long as it hasn't got Holy Communion, then you've got like, it's like an hour and a half. <laughs> um, so like a non-Holy Communion church ceremony. But with a celebrant, the topic isn't church and Jesus. The topic is you and your wedding and your character and your story and the journey you've been on, if it's been a journey. If it's just all about what lies ahead, then we talk about all the, what lies ahead and your attitude to that. If it's the journey that you've been on, we reflect on that. But the beauty is, it's about you. It's about you. It's not about me. It's not about your prophet or your god or your idol or anything. It's about you. And that's what I love. And so when people inquire and go, are you available for a fake wedding? No, I'm not available for a fake wedding. I, just no. Um, but without being pessimistic about it, it's quite an old-fashioned approach. Um, well, old-fashioned, probably not even five years because celebrants, we've been around, I don't know, 12 years? 12 years, maybe? Um, but I get why they're asking. It's just a bit rude and a bit disrespectful and a bit short-sighted to phrase it in that way when you're inquiring. So I guess also my point is, to all of you wedding planning... I would love you to support entrepreneurs. I would love you to support suppliers in the wedding industry. I would love you to support independent folk like me doing their best to give you the most bespoke, tailor-made, you know, made with love, handmade UK, whatever you want to call it, ceremony for you. So if you want that energy back at you, don't start your inquiry with, hi, are you available for a fake wedding? So it just devalues what we do and it also doesn't show us that you value what you're doing because nothing about the wedding is fake. You are genuinely turning up because you want to. You are genuinely turning up because your heart is full of love and joy. You are genuinely engaging suppliers because you care who helps make your wedding. The people in the room hopefully are genuinely there to support you. The music that's playing is happening now. The love in the room is felt there. The, it's just, it, um, yeah. I don't really know how else to articulate it. <laughs> Let me, um, see. Oh, I guess when it, I mean, sort of six years ago when I had those, those kind of inquiries I, I don't get anymore, which is really nice because it shows that I'm really, um, attracting the right kind of clients to me so I haven't had anyone ask me for a fake wedding for about six years which is very reassuring so thank you all my followers for phrasing your inquiries nicely as if you value yourself and you value me and you value the investment you're going to put in your ceremony because inviting people to a wedding makes the wedding ceremony the heart of the day and if you don't make the ceremony the heart of the day then it's just a party and then you don't need a celebrant, then just have a registrar and don't care about the ceremony. Um, and then you're not my kind of person, so it doesn't matter. So, um, I was going to have a list in my head then. Oh, yeah. So, sometimes it's about pleasing your elders. You know, so if you've got... I do get it. If you've brought up in family that is religious and you're not having a religious wedding or they've been brought up in a culture where it's expected that all, all the kids, you, your brothers and sisters, your cousins, you're all christened for no apparent reason other than school places. 
or for no apparent reason other than that's just what happened. I get that. I'm. I get that. I totally get that. But you're no longer the baby that was christened. You're now the grown-up making an informed choice. And it's just making sure that informed choice comes with value and understanding and respect for yourself and your choices. I've done quite a few lives about freedom of choice and, you know, snooze you lose, use it or lose it. I'm really, it's, you just, it's so important. It's so important. It's so important. It's so important. So, it's not fake. Everything is genuine. It's not a fake wedding because wedding is the event. Marriage is the legally binding contract. You don't have a marriage dress and a marriage magazine. You have a marriage contract and you have a wedding ceremony. That's my point. Um, so nothing about it is fake. Don't feel like you have to apologise for it. If Granny Pip is saying, oh, it's a fake wedding, it's not real because you got married the day before. Go back to basics. Go back to registrars. Register births, deaths and marriages. They're not in the room for the birth. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. The birth happens. You register the birth. The death happens. They're not standing over the body watching the last breath. Doesn't mean it didn't happen just because they didn't see it. They're not there to witness the event. They're there to witness the legally binding contract is done soberly and after serious thought and legally. You're not coerced, you're not pushed, it's not a pretense. That's their role. They are legally binding registrars that have the power of the law, the council, you know, all of that jazz behind them. They bear that weight, they bear that burden, they bear that, that um, responsibility. So you do have to turn up sober, you do have to take it seriously. It is a lifelong contract. Do that. Get it done. And then go out for a boozy lunch and think, oh, we've done the legal stuff. Phew. And then on the Saturday or the Friday or the Sunday afternoon, whenever you want to have your wedding, have it without that burden. Have it with just the joy. Just the joy. Isn't that nice? Yeah, and you don't get marriage photographers. Can you imagine having a photographer all throughout your marriage? It's just for the wedding. Just for the wedding. The wedding is the event. Right. So that's my point. The wedding is the event. It's not fake. The marriage is a contract. It's legally binding. That has things. All right. Lots of love. Take care. Thanks for joining. Bye.